Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Nicole. So in today's video, we are going to be doing something super fun. We're going to be building a eight foot long entertainment center. So it's going to be kind of like a buffet style looking entertainment center. So I got the plans for this entertainment center while I was scrolling on Pinterest. Actually, I knew I wanted to do something different in my living room area. So I was just scrolling Pinterest. You know how we do. And I found a blog post by Frills and Drills. I will link her down below. And she built this restoration hardware dupe of an entertainment center. I don't know if it's an entertainment center or a buffet per se. However, I wanted it as an entertainment center. She said she got the plans from Shanty Too Chic and Anna White. So I used all three of these different blogs to kind of get an idea of what I wanted to do. I read through all three blogs to make sure that I got all of the like notes, everything that they experienced, you know, so I wouldn't have the same maybe issues that they had or so I could learn something from the things that they experienced. And I feel like that helped me a lot. I was really grateful that I ended up doing that. And actually my plans were completely different from the Anna White and Shanty Too Chic plans because theirs was actually for a buffet and they actually even did a hutch on top of that buffet. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna leave all the blog posts down below for all those three blogs. So theirs, since it was a buffet, it was 36 inches high and I think theirs was 72 inches long. I knew I wanted to fill up my entire living room. I have this wall that's like specifically for the TV and I wanted to fill the whole thing. I wanted it to kind of look a little bit built in. So I made mine eight feet long and I only took mine up 30 inches. So I did the same width that they did, which was 15 and three fourths width. I think once it's said and done, it's more like 16 inches of a width. But yes, the plans will be linked down below. Also guys, I wanted to let you guys know, I started my own blog because I love sharing with you all. And sometimes it's a little bit fun to type things out. I can type a little bit more so that the videos are not so long and I'm not here talking the entire time. So I'm also gonna leave my own blog post. So. When this video goes out, I will not have my blog post done yet because this video is literally gonna go out right after I finish doing the whole project and editing this video. So the blog will go out probably the following week, but I will leave my blog post linked down below. I'm gonna edit it once I'm done with my blog post. I will leave it linked down in this video. So make sure you keep checking on this video so that you can see when I link the blog post to these plans onto this video and it will give you a lot more information a lot of behind the scenes more pictures and things like that so if you're more of a person that likes to read as opposed to watch a video make sure that you check out my blog post like i said it might not be up right away but if you see it linked down below then that means this video has been out for a little bit and i had time to go ahead and type it up and put it down there for you all Okay, y'all, so that's it. That's my long intro, but let's go ahead and get into this video. As we do the video, I'll be popping back on and giving you guys like little tips and tricks or things that I learned, and let's get into it. So let me let you guys know the items that you're gonna need to buy to build this entertainment center. You're gonna need one four by eight hardwood plywood at three fourths of an inch. You're gonna need one four by eight MDF at three fourths of an inch as well. You're gonna need two one by two by eight trim pieces two one by four by eight trim pieces, six one by three by eight trim pieces, one two by four at the shortest length that you can find, one four by eight wainscot paneling, two cans of Rust-Oleum Satin Black finish paint, one and one fourth finishing nails, one and one fourth wood screws, wood glue, 220 grit sandpaper, hinges, and hardware for your doors. So y'all, I'm just gonna leave the cut list here on a side split screen. That way you can read through it if you're actually gonna make this project. And if you're not, and you're one of my subbies just watching my video, I appreciate you so much. And I will not bore you with reading every single cut that we need to make. But if you are making this project, I do wanna let you know, make sure to measure as you go because your cuts may be off by an eighth of an inch, by less, maybe a little bit more, but measure as you go. And I left little notes here for you. This will also be in my blog post, so make sure to watch out for that and this is going to be your tool list so you're going to need a circular saw you're going to need a brad nailer you're going to need a drill a chop saw would be very handy you don't absolutely need it but it would be very handy for the face frame pieces and a sander with 220 grit sandpaper i started out this whole project by cutting out what would be the top the bottom and the two sides and the trim that will trim out the two side pieces 
For the trim for the two side pieces, the plans do call for a one by three. However, I didn't buy enough one by three. The cut list is up to date, so that is the amount of one by three that you'll need. But I ended up using one by two instead for the trim around the two side pieces because I just had one by two laying around. So this is the side piece right here. That's the side piece. So we're just gonna put the trim on like that like that and then these two pieces I'm gonna have to look at the plans again oh let me push this one up so it's flush I'm gonna have to look at the plans again they want you to put it up a little bit higher so not at the bottom a little bit higher and then uh, we're gonna wrap it with some kind of either molding or trim so I need to measure that before we get it nailed in and then this one will just go flush with the top up here so of course you know it's just a rough draft because i haven't actually put it together but that's kind of the idea of it so now we're going to use some wood glue and the brad nailer and just get these set in place on either door there's our other four pieces and then i have the other door cut over off to the side so let's go ahead and get this part put together so another thing that I like to do when I'm doing builds like this is I like to sand while I'm building. That way I don't have to worry about finish sanding before I actually get to the paint stage of things. So as you can see here, I'm gonna just sand everything down before I get it put together. That way when we get to the painting stage, we don't have to worry about any finish sanding. It's just straight to the paint. So I just looked at the plans and this bottom one needs to go for when you're measuring from the bottom up to here, six and one fourths is right here. All right, y'all. So I'm sure you understand my excitement. At the end of day one, this is where we're at. We did the two doors, the top and the bottom are cut. I already sanded them down and this is how it's looking. There's the sides. Did I say the doors are done? I meant the sides are done. I'm sorry. It's been a long day, but this is where we're at at the end of day one. So tomorrow we will get to actually building and then getting the supports put in. So we're going to have one kind of like divider right here and another one over here then that's the bottom and then I'm gonna see if I can make some cabinet doors for it but stay tuned we'll see what we get into tomorrow all right y'all so it's now the following day and I decided actually that I wanted to paint everything before we start to put it together that way the top and the bottom so like the inside pieces will also be painted so let's go ahead and get into painting I also don't know if I'm gonna do white or black yet so we're gonna try one side white and one side black take it inside and figure out which color we want the whole entertainment center to be So here are the two sides, one painted white, one painted black. So honestly, first impression, I feel like the black looks the best. Um, everything else in my house furniture wise is pretty dark and I feel like it looks really nice and suits this house. So I think we're gonna go with black. The white looks really nice as well, but honestly it really pops. And like I said, nothing else in the house is really light colored. Everything is a darker color and it really just goes well with the floor, the walls and everything so we're gonna stick to the black so the whole entertainment center will be painted black now we can repaint that white one black and give the black one a second coat so let's go ahead and get into it so guys this is a little hack that i use i cover my little plastic thing holding my paint with foil paper and i also cover the little foam roller with foil paper and you can leave it for days this is four days that i use the same paint in this little plastic container and the paint stayed just the same as if it was day one. I just mix it with a little popsicle stick before I use it and it's good to go. And the paint that we're gonna be using is Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover in Semi-Gloss Black. I use this paint for almost all of my projects indoors and I really like it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, y'all, so it's the following day and everything is painted and I just cut 15 inch pieces of two by four to use as kind of legs for the bottom part because like I told you guys, the bottom part of the entertainment center is kind of floating. It's not level to the ground. So let's go ahead and start assembling this. Then I will go ahead and cut the center pieces that will be in the middle of the entertainment center to kind of give it more rigidity and just to make it, you know, divisions. We're going to have shelves on this side and then shelves on this side. So let's go ahead and get into putting this all together. So to add the legs, I just flipped the piece around and then I measured 31 inches from the outside and put the first leg and then 31 inches from the other side and put the second leg in. And to attach the legs, I just used one and a fourth inch screws and I just screwed them in from the side in. So kind of like a pocket hole type look. Also always keep in mind to have your speed square available to use like you'll see me using it right here to make sure that this is straight and be using your level as you go as well. So here is one side done. If you have a pocket hole jig, that would probably work really well. However, I don't. And to be honest, I don't wanna make the investment because they're pretty expensive. Uh, my husband taught me how to make pocket holes with just a drill bit and your drill. So that's how I make my pocket holes. They're not the prettiest, of course, but that's okay, especially because these are gonna be at the bottom. And if you just kind of drill them in a little bit further like that, if you sink them in, then you can just wood fill them. So even if they were in a place where you were gonna see them, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. So I wanna kinda of explain to you all my process for putting the sides on. So I brought the rest of the two by four in and I'm gonna slide it under the bottom part. So I'm gonna slide it under here, right here, just so that I know that it is already up four inches, which is where we need it to be. And then I think in the plans, what they did is they did pocket holes from the bottom and they connected it that way. However, since I'm by myself, it's gonna be very hard to hold it at exactly four inches and get the pocket holes in. So what I think I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna drill straight from the side over here, just straight in to where the bottom of the entertainment center would be. Of course, it's not gonna look as nice because we're gonna have actual screw holes out here. Once again, if you sink the screw holes in, you can just wood fill them and then paint over them. And that's kind of my plan. Um, I'm not expecting my paint job to look perfect when I'm done building. It was just more so that it was the first coats done and the inside is painted and I don't have to worry about painting the inside, but I know fully well that I'm gonna have to give it touch-ups and things like that as we're building. So yes, that's the next part I'm gonna do. I will put the camera right here so that you guys can kind of see me slide the wood under and then get the holes drilled into the bottom of the entertainment center. So here it is with the top on. Of course, the middle is gonna sag because we don't have any supports in it yet, and that's okay. I wanna get this part done first and measure and make sure that my supports are the exact length that they need to be to go in here. So what I did was I just put the top on and then I got my level to make sure that the sides right here are level on both sides, and they are, so we are ready to drill. Let me show you guys how I'm gonna drill this in. So. If I was gonna make it easy on myself, like I said, I would just drill from the top down right here and then countersink and then wood fill. What I'm gonna try is to do pocket holes. So I'm gonna try to do the pocket holes, which is gonna be kind of hard for me because I've never done them like this way, upside down kind of, but we'll see how it goes. So this is the inside. I'm gonna do the pocket hole from like here in to the top of the entertainment center. So let's see how that goes. If it doesn't work out, Last resort would be to just do it simple and do my screws in through right here. All 
right y'all so progress update we got the inside pieces of the entertainment center cut and i have one side painted i'm letting it dry and then i'll flip it over and paint the other side and now i'm going to move on to as you can see behind me the trim pieces so we're going to cut the trim pieces that way we can trim out the front of the entertainment center so let's get into it This is where we're at, y'all. Emma is in the way, but as you can tell, the two middle pieces went in and they went in really seamlessly. They're nice and tight in there. So now we're just gonna secure it with some pocket hole screws. They're there and at the bottom on both of them. And then we can get to adding the frame. As you can see, I already have one part of the frame there at the top and the frame I am not gonna paint until after we install it. So let's go ahead and get to securing those two pieces. So the next step after I made sure that the inside pieces were secure is to get the face frame on. So I went ahead and turned the entertainment center on its back. So this is the front that you're seeing. I'm going to put the first piece on. They wanted you in the plans to make the face frame off of the actual center and then put it on to your build. However, I thought it would be easier to do each piece individually. That way I make sure my cuts are perfect because I am not a perfect woodworker. I don't always make my cuts perfect, so I wanted to do it one piece at a time. So I started with the top piece, as you see right here. We're just gonna add some wood glue and then brad nail it into place. Next, I measured everything. I cut all the pieces and I brought them all in. I just put them in place without actually brad nailing them or gluing them down so I could make sure that they fit. And then I attached the pieces in this order. So of course we did the top one first, then I did the bottom, then I did the two sides, and then lastly, I did the two inside pieces. So now, as you can see, we're on the side. I am just gonna add another piece of one by four here to the side to cover up this unsightly tabletop and then it attaching to the side. I just want it to look kind of more finished. What they wanted you to do in the plans is use an actual piece of molding, like baseboard molding, to make it look a little bit more finished. However, I like the more, I guess, modern rustic type look of clean lines. I don't really want molding lines on there. So I decided to just use a piece of one by four. Okay, y'all, so now that I'm done building the box frame pretty much of the entertainment center, I do want to make some cabinet doors for it. And I am going to kind of, uh, I feel like I'm going to cheat a little bit maybe. <laughs> so this is what was supposed to be used for the backing of the entertainment center. However, it's already super heavy and super sturdy. So I figured I don't want to use this as the backing after all. I went and got a wainscoting um, to use as the back and it's super super thin it's really just going to be more for aesthetics than it is going to be for anything else so let me show you guys this is the back like I said so it's already 30 inches wide so I want each cabinet door to be 14 inches wide and 25 inches long so I'm going to use the back which is 30 inches like I said and I'm just going to cut all of my cabinet doors out of it so I want two cabinet doors per section so we have three sections so that's six cabinet doors I already have one cut right here and we're going to cut the rest out and then I got some more one by three to make a frame around it to make them look like shaker style cabinets. All right y'all so after I cut all of the cabinet doors out then I went ahead and cut all of the frame pieces for the cabinet doors out of one by three. And then I went ahead and painted everything and then I attached everything after the paint was dry, I attached it once again with wood glue and the brad nailer. And lastly, for the cabinet doors, I went ahead and used some wood filler to fill in where the little brad nails went in and also to fill in where the different pieces of wood met each other so that it would look really nice and seamless. And to be honest with you all, I don't really like how this ended up drying up. Of course, I sanded after the wood filler dried and then I painted, but you could still see the wood filler through the paint and I'm not happy about that. You'll see it at the end of the video. So I'm going to try to give each cabinet door another coat of paint or a couple more coats of paint if I need to, to hopefully cover up the wood filler really well because I don't really like how that ended up looking. Mm -hmm. 
Then I moved to the inside, back to the entertainment center. I painted the face of it and I used wood filler on the top to fill in the gaps where the face met the actual top of the entertainment center. I sanded that down and then I gave it another coat as well. So y'all, do you know what today is? Today is the final day of building our entertainment center. Oh my gosh, I could not wait for this day to come. And here it is, today is the day. All that I need to do today is attach the door fronts and attach the back and that's it, we are done. So then we can get it in the space and I can show you guys the grand reveal of building this extra long entertainment center all by myself. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so happy that I was able to do it. So let's go ahead and get into finishing it up. So here is the backing already cut out. Let's go ahead and attach it. Okay, so y'all, I wanted to talk to you about how I am going to install the door fronts onto our entertainment center because the plans actually want you to do what's called like an inlay cabinet door, which would mean that it would lay flush with the rest of the face of the cabinet. But I read in a blog post that that was really difficult to do. She said it was the hardest part of the whole entertainment center was to lay the cabinet doors flush in here and that you could kind of see little gaps because if you're not perfect, it will just not work out very good. So I thought to myself as I was looking around my kitchen and other, you know, cabinets in my house, I was thinking, you know what? All cabinet doors that I see in my house, at least, they're all overlay. So they're all laying on top of the face. They're not like flush with it. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to try that and do that. So that is why I cut my doors bigger than what the plans call for. And we're going to lay it over like this. So it is going to be over the face, like I said, not inside. And I already put my little holes for my hinges right here. Let me show you guys the hinges. So these are the hinges that we're gonna use right here. This is an example of how it's gonna be. You're gonna put it like this. Then the door is gonna be over here on this part. And the door will not be able to open like all the way back, but it will stop like right at a 90 degree angle, which is perfect for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang the doors two inches down from the top of the entertainment center and let's see how it goes. Let's go ahead and get these hung. All right, so I will tell you all, hanging these doors was very difficult. I looked at all of my footage and it took me about an hour and a half to get all of the doors hung. And it was a lot of trial and error. I will not lie to you all. I gave up on the idea of hanging the doors two inches below the top. And instead I went and got my two by four scrap piece and I used it as like the bottom because I figured if the two by four is level, then the bottom of the doors will be level if they sit flush on the two by four. And then that will kind of make the whole thing level. And it worked for some of the doors. It didn't work for all of the doors. I had to go through and use a level for a lot of the doors. So I'm going to cut out a lot of this footage. Just be forewarned, if you're going to do this project, I still think that an overlay door would be easier. However, it is still quite difficult to do. You can get it done for sure if you're an amateur like myself. However, it will take you a little bit of trial and error. Moment of truth, moment of truth. Yes! Look at that. What do you think, what do you think? I give it a A plus. My God, it looks really good, huh? Yeah. I'm so happy with it. You built that, bro. My gosh, I filled the space. That's what I've been wanting for so long, is this space to just be full and look good at the same time. Wow. All right, y'all. So as you can tell, we put the entertainment center into place and I absolutely love how it looks. Are you gonna pass? <laughs> Excuse Emma. <laughs> And I think Mila's gonna come. No, she went that way. Okay, so we put it in place. So now the next step and the last step, really, I want to add these little magnets right here so that the cabinet doors don't open and close on their own. I don't think that they will, but just in case, we're gonna put some little magnets. 
So let's go ahead and install these now. Nice. All right, y'all, so that's gonna be it for today's video. It was so much fun building my own entertainment center. I really had no idea if I was gonna be able to do this or not. As you guys have noticed, when I pop in and out, this is how I'm dressed the last day, the day that for sure I knew I could do it because I did not wanna film little pieces here and there of me talking to the camera if this wasn't gonna work out for me. But it did work out and I am so, so, so excited that it did. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I hope that I kind of maybe inspired you to do your own DIY. Remember once again, once my blog post is up, it will be linked down below. So make sure you keep coming back and checking on this video to see when the blog post is up. And I will also leave it in the community tab. So make sure that you click the little notification bell if you guys wanna see when I post on our little community page because sometimes I like to type on there and we can kind of chit chat on there as well. So yes, don't forget to click the little bell. If you're not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye y'all. Thank you.